all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the weekly update all right so we're just going to look at the weekly charts today and then we're going to go over what we can expect off of the daily charts for this week what levels we can be watching but before we begin i just want to point out i am seeing a lot of back tests across the board so that is going to be the focus of this video all right, so starting off here on SPY, you can see we are literally just back testing where we broke out from a few weeks ago. About five weeks ago, we broke out over here, and you can see buyers started stepping in pretty much right there. We're going to come over here to QQQ. I'm going to point out you are literally just back testing where you broke out from a few weeks ago. You started seeing sellers step in right here, buyers. We had an imbalance to the buy side. And then guess what? We're coming back and back testing that. We're going to have to see if this ends up holding. Coming over to DIA. You broke out a few weeks ago from this massive inverse head and shoulders formation that took seven months to construct. You had seven months of consolidation. You just broke out. Do I think you're going to come back into it? No. If we have a larger correction, you are very likely just going to come back and test this neckline then you're going to continue back off to make a new high. IWM, what do we have over here? We have a large symmetrical triangle. And what is going on right here? All right, you look like you're coming down and back testing where you broke out from a few weeks ago. Now, as you see, I have two arrows. I have two scenarios here. We're going to have to see which one plays out. If you start losing this, then you do risk coming all the way down here to 180. And then if you lose that, that's when you're probably going to test this bottom trend line right there. That is, uh, that's pretty much it here on the indices, guys. Like Things are pretty simple. We just have to wait to see what happens. So we are going to come over here to the daily time frame. And I am just going to put on a different layout here. And we are going to take a look at this stuff over here. We're going to take, up, take a look at some individual levels here. All right, so the 442.97 gap fill. We came within 40 cents on Friday from filling that gap. I do think it's likely that we fill that gap before going up. I would be extremely surprised to see us really just stay 40 cents within that gap fill and not fill that. So that is what I'm looking for. Underneath the 442.97 gap fill, I will be watching this 438.18 level. That is the open of this candlestick right here. Now, moving over to QQQ. We are testing the 363.41 level over here if you lose that level then i will be watching 357.59 but i will point out you have your daily rsi all the way down at 40 as we speak i just want to point this out since january you have not gone below where you are right now so i do think if we go a little lower it's going to set you up for a very large bounce even in your bear market you were set up for a very large bounce if you saw your RSI dip below where it is right now, get over to 30 to 35. You had a $20 bounce right here. You come down. Guess what? All right. You formed this little bullish divergence. What did this bring you? All right. Brought you a $15 bounce right there. And guys, keep in mind, this is in the bear market. This is when we had peak fear going on. All right. You just kept getting these large scale bounces. Am I saying we're not going to go lower after you get that big bounce? No, not saying that at all. But if you've been paying attention to the... Uh, videos throughout the week the updates throughout the week then you know we are seeing conditions that lead to large bounces and this is just one of those so if we do go a little lower here and we do come down to test 357.59 i honestly i will be looking for a large bounce that that would be it or whenever we see this thing get down all the way over to 30 to 35 that's when we can really start seeing or saying we likely have a large bounce so if you're betting on a crash just know, if you see that condition pop up, which I'll let you know, all right, don't worry, I, I will keep you updated here on this channel, Monday through Friday, and then we do the weekly updates like we are right now on Saturday. Actually, we're going to start a, uh, we're going to start this Sunday, we're going to be starting uh, the live streams for setups going into the week. I do a watch list for the Discord each week. I, I like to have at least 10 setups on there, They're normally about 15. But uh, yeah, we can start going over those here live on YouTube starting tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. That will be fun. 
But uh, yeah, back to the charts here, guys. That's what we're going to be looking for over there. Upside levels include 372.45. That is the high of this candlestick over here. And 375.29 is the high of this candlestick right here. If you do get above 375.29, that is when we are very likely going to be targeting this 380.69 gap fill. We already did fill our gap fill to the downside over here on, well, we filled our gap, not we filled our gap fill. We filled the gap and created a gap fill. Um, right over here at 363, 60, uh, 368.63. Buy still has his lower gap open, which is why I don't think we are just going to run up and fill this upper gap without filling this. It would make much more sense to fill the lower one and then run up there. But yeah, upside level over here on SPY, we will be watching 451.55. It did change around that level from 452 to 451.55. That is the low of this candlestick. Why did I do that? We have two re wick rejections going on right here and right here. And then clearly we have that touch point. Those two right there. So I do think that's a level being respected, which is why we will be watching that level and respecting that level. But yeah, that is pretty much it over here. Let's now review six. Six, guys. It was red on Friday alongside SPX, which does show us that big money, smart money, the guys who actually can move this thing are not loading puts, and they might be buying calls while SPY and SPX, SPX are down. So that is something to take note going into Monday and Tuesday. I want to point that out. I also want to remind you guys, this week, we did have CPI. It, did, it came in as a beat, but it still was the first tick up in inflation since May of 2022. We had PPI. That came in as a miss. So we have two signs that inflation is ticking back up. That is very likely why we are seeing the reaction this week that we saw. So there's that. All right. But Back over to VIX, you see it failed the breakout over here. It started rounding off. You have a bunch of upward wicks. I'm just going to point out, I don't think this thing looks bullish. I do not. It could, uh, you know, I'm not saying we can't have one of these massive spikes, but I think we are likely to continue falling, and we're going to have to pay attention to not only the support down here at 12, uh, just about 1270. Is that actually an exact level? Yeah, 1273, the low of this candlestick. So we'll have to pay attention to 1273 which also will align with the back test of this triangle. This descending triangle did break out from not too long ago. So we're going to probably see volatility pick up over there, but I will be waiting on that back test, which means we could get that bounce. Now we are going to take a look at the weekly charts of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Goog. And then we have a bonus setup for you guys. All right, so I'm actually going to come back over here to this layout. And we are going to look at them on here. And I am going to point out on Apple, you are literally still just back testing where you got rejected three times as you made an attempt for all time highs. I did move this zone. Originally, I did have this zone over here, but I did move it down to these lower wicks right here, which aligns with this one as well. So as long as you do hold this, just like we just reviewed on SPY, QQ, and IWM and DIA that just broke out from, uh, you know, inverse head and shoulders. This doesn't look so bad. It really does not. You do have increasing volume on the week. I want to point that one out. You can see the large red candlestick was confirmed, all right? So bearish candlestick was confirmed. We could go a little lower this week, but not nearly the size. And you have wicks on both sides of that candlestick. So I do think we could be in store for something like over here. You had, you know, a pretty similar candlestick right there. Then you went a little lower, and then you got a little bounce right there. That was uh, from that, you know, that was about a $10 bounce right there. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be like that. I personally don't think we have the conditions and the fear in the market like we did over here. I do see a lot of people calling for a crash, but I want to point out, without substance for that crash, why are you going to be calling for these things? We're going to stick to doing what we do best here on the channel and just playing everything as it goes. That is the best way to go about things, in my personal opinion. If you agree, you're probably going to like what we talk about here on the channel. Microsoft, what do we also have if we go a little lower? How much lower, you ask? 1% to 2% lower, all right? This zone is 1% to 3% lower. That would be, you know, the same drop we had this week. We would be back testing where we 
you know, got held up over here where we saw sellers step in. So a recent, it was a supply zone. You had sellers start stepping in over here and then boom, you broke out. And now it should act as a demand zone. We are going to have to see if that gets confirmed. How is that going to get confirmed? If we do start seeing a buy imbalance, a bounce off of this zone. That is how we will know. There are buy orders there, more buy orders than sell orders. And there you go. And I will also say from highs, you're already down 13% as we speak. So that is something to point out. I will point out though, you don't have any support once you broke down through uh, over here, once you lost that level on you know Friday's candlestick, you don't have any support until you come all the way down here to 312. And then you do have this gap fill around. Let's just see exact gap fill would be the high at 316.50. So you have a gap fill at gap to fill at 316.50 that would align with that you know, one to 3% bounce or drop right there that would then likely bring us a bounce. Back to the weekly time frame, we have that. Now moving over to Amazon, I will point out, all right, let's just pretend these aren't here and let's just look at the structure going on over here. I do wanna point out, if you take the low of this candlestick, you literally did get rejected right there and you got rejected right there. So this is probably a level we should be paying attention to. Let's just draw it with a zone, a little like that. If you do break out, that likely would be pretty bullish and you likely would start heading up here to the next point of resistance, which I can really say is right here at 156. And then we would have a zone right here at big old zone, uh, topping out at 171 and the bottom of that would be 165. That would be a decent sized move that we could be looking for once you get above that level. That is a $20 move, a 13% move. Now let's talk about the bullish structure that I am seeing. Let's delete that alert just for this video. Let's look at it. All right. Well, right here, you can see we have a trend line there. All right. Well, you had this left shoulder. You had a head. And let's say you do get a pullback right here. And then you come back up and test that level. I'm not saying it takes that much time. That would bring us into November. But let's even say you get something like that. Well, you have a mini, mini right shoulder going on right there. Regardless, you do have this trend line now going from here to there, that will be something of interest to us here on this channel. We'll be watching that. If you do get a break, you can see what I just pointed out. That is a $20 move to the upside. There we go. You are right up a resistance. We need, just like we need price to prove to us that we're gonna get a crash, all right? Or have a more significant decline. We need price to prove it over here on Amazon that we're going to have a more significant rally. Coming on over to Goog, I'm going to point out this very similar structure going on right here. You have your left shoulder, you have your head, you have your right shoulder, and you have actually now broken out past that, came back into it. So we're going to have to see price come up, back up and break the high. The next spot we're going to be watching for resistance is all the way up here at 141.50 to 144. That is a ways away from the highs. That is another $8 move over here on Goog. As you see, guys, at least to me, things don't look all that bad. It's just something I will point out. That is why I said what I said at the beginning of the video. Things really don't look all that bad. Now, bonus setup. I'm going to point out something I actually just saw right here on CVS. Let's just pretend these aren't here. Let's go through it like, you know, your boy Henry just went through it. Well, I saw that trend line. I was like, oh, left shoulder. What do you also have? You have a head. What do you have over here? You have a right shoulder. So if you do end up breaking above this trend line and then you do get back above the high of 77, you do likely, which we can actually just draw a zone here. We'll draw it. It'll be a big old zone right here. But uh, oh, actually, no, that perfectly aligns with where you got rejected over here. But yeah, if you get over 78, guys, then we uh, will also, I mean, you can also look at this as a cup and handle formation right there. Then the next stop really will be all the way up here. Uh, and now this was filled structure. So the next unfilled structure is going to be all the way up here. All right. But uh, regardless, both of these are a ways away. And that would be something that you can play. There you go. Next thing I'm going to point out is something I pointed out several times this week, but I actually found out there is a third wedge going on here. And this is just absolutely getting ridiculous at this point. All right, you have three flipping wedges going on at Disney. All right, you had the daily small wedge that we just pointed out that you broke out from going from here to, or was it this one right here? All right, 
you have this thing we'll just delete them as we go here all right you had this one broke out from it all right and you could say like it was it was this little guy right there all right but you broke out from that one so there's number one and then you have number two which is this one right here let's go on the weekly time frame this is where you could better see that all right from that one to that one to here and there 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 you have six touch points total you broke out from that one on friday and then what do you also have you have this massive one so like each one of these wedge breakouts is just going to bring you to the next one and um yeah this is quite crazy all right guys so if you do reach what i was watching on the daily chart which is the hundred dollar gap flow right here the it's a uh, 104 to be exact that would break you out of this larger scale falling wedge which actually we could probably just look on the monthly chart and yeah, you have that monthly consolidation right there but let's just see this goes all the way back to the beginning of yeah july 2022 there's quite some time how many weeks do we got going on here guys i know it's over a year okay we have a year and one month that this has spent forming i just want to say this is a sexy setup in my personal opinion all right so that is pretty much it guys with that being said i hope everybody has a lovely rest of their weekend and i will catch y'all on monday peace